At this point, it's like if somebody just pre-chewed an In-N-Out burger for you and then spit it into a bowl of sauce, but in a good way. Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. I right, to address the elephant on my head, I've decided that I'm gonna try and be a beanie guy. Uh, if you think I pull it off, comment below. If you think I look like a real piece of crap and you hate me, also comment below. Either way, comment. So what are we making today? We are making an In-N-Out calzone. Why are we making an In-N-Out calzone? Because In-N-Out is stagnant. I love them so much. I grew up eating In-N-Out, but they have not changed their menu in like 60 years. And I think they haven't changed their menu because no idea good enough has come along to change their menu for them. So that's what I'm doing because you're taking the handheld innovation of the Italian calzone and you're transmuting that into the In-N-Out flavors. And I think it is the perfect hybrid and I'm going to win the love and respect of President Lindsay Snyder. That's right, that's in and outs corporate president's name. I don't know why I know that. We've broken the recipe down to three easy steps. You can snag the time codes right there. We also get a full written version down in the description. Let's get cooking. So for the In-N-Out Calzone, we're starting with a pretty basic pizza dough right here. We got some water that's been warmed, but not past 110 degrees, because that's what kills yeast. But then anything after 104.25 degrees kills humans. That's why hot tubs aren't allowed to go above that, because you can suffer. Y'all ever notice that there's like way more warnings on every hot tub everywhere than there is on like uh, any alcohol bottle or lit? That's crazy, man. I want to be in a 115 degree hot tub. I want you to sous vide me to medium rare. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some yeast to this water right here. We're gonna get that blooming. We're gonna make a basic pizza dough to shove a bunch of In-N-Out flavored ingredients into there. Also, I remember why I know the name of In-N-Out's president and that's cause uh, like five years ago, I wrote a GoFundMe petition to try and get a veggie burger on the secret menu at In-N-Out. Cause they haven't changed their menu, but they have all these secret menu items. You can get the Flying Dutchman, which is just like uh, beef and cheese on a little plate. You can get uh, animal style, right? That's not even on the official menu, but they even have it copyrighted. We're adding some sugar to get that yeast blooming and stir that up. But, 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 there's not a single veggie burger. You can order a grilled cheese in and out, but that's just a burgerless burger. So I did a whole GoFundMe that has up to 45 signatures last time I checked. We'll link it below and go try and add the frying starchman, which is what I called it. It's a brick of coagulated animal style fries shoved inside of a bun. And I petitioned Lindsay Snyder and what I estimated to be millions that would follow me, but nope, only 43. But you 43 people out there, you're the real ones. All right, so we got the yeast blooming. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add all of the flour to the stand mixer. I have a lot of history in and out. You can add garlic powder and salt. The in and out parking lot is where like rival high schools would fight each other, but it was like a high school fight, so no one ever actually do anything. You know, people would show up and be like, what's up, bro? What's up? And then that would go on for 15 minutes and everyone would leave, so pretty exciting stuff. There we go, we're just gonna turn this on and we're gonna drop in our water and our oil. We'd go to in and out after every like youth basketball game, and that was the first time I was introduced to the idea uh, that a friend's mom said, which was she ordered a bun protein style, which is no bun, just lettuce wrapped. And she said, the bun is the only part that's bad for you as she ate like three quarters of a pound of beef and American cheese. So that's another fun thing that happened to in and out for me. A little internalized lifelong carb phobia, no biggie. We're gonna drop in, yeah, get it working. There it is, there it is. Now we're just gonna run this way. Hold on, I need, to, I need something to poke it. Sometimes you gotta put a knife inside your machinery to get the get the flour incorporated. There it is. Maybe we should just stop it. And we'll turn it on high. You know, life short, just, just crank it, you know? I'm gonna shut this down. I'm gonna fold in the dough a little bit. Just trying to incorporate some of that shaggy flour in there. Beautiful, and oh, oh, oh. So we're gonna let this run for about five minutes. That's gonna knead the dough. It's gonna elongate some of those gluten structures. You've seen us make pizza dough before, but this isn't pizza dough. It's in and out calzone dough, and it's way different. How? Unclear. That said, we're gonna let this knead. There it goes. Nice, turn into a nice shaggy dough. And then we are going to get this covered, rested, and we're gonna make our in and out beef filling. So now we gotta make our In-N-Out burger inspired beef filling for our In-N-Out burger inspired beef calzone. If you're keeping track of the acronyms at home, that's Ibibf and Ibikf, <laughs> if you are. So we're, we're starting our Ibibf right here. We're gonna take a little bit of oil and then we're just gonna take a bunch of beef and we're gonna slop that right in there. Of course, when they actually put this in stores, this isn't how they're gonna do it. This is my official pitch to In-N-Out. We're gonna season it up with, oh, I, mean, I poop. I said poop, I poop, I forgot the salt. 
Let's just season this up with salt. Because in and out does season their meat really well. This isn't how they do it in stores. My actual pitch to In-N-Out, this is what we're doing, Linz. We're close now, I call you Linz. I bought your $60 knockoff Vans In-N-Out shoes on the internet. Okay, I thought it was a collab with Vans, was not. Those are Walmart shoes. They hurt my feet, all right, but I still bought them. Anyways, Wendy's Chili. Wendy's Chili, right? What they do is they take all the leftover burgers at the end of a good hard Wendy's day and they chop those up. They put them into a giant vat with, I swear to God, ketchup and like some kidney beans and a little bit of onion slop. And they take what would be food waste and turn it into a really delicious 99 cent cup of slop that you can eat in a hot car. What I think In-N-Out should do is take the leftover burgers at the end of the day and they're just gonna chop it up and then they're gonna pop it into a pan with, wait for it, Hold on, wait for it, in and out spread. So this is what we're doing. We're taking ketchup, <laughs> the ingredients of in and out spread are ketchup, mayonnaise, pickle relish, mustard. We're gonna add that in there. A Little bit of tomato paste just to thicken it. My pitch, I don't, I don't expect in and out to have flour and butter on hand or milk. What I do expect them to have, wait, you can just get a glass of milk at in and out which I do, if you want just french fries and milk, you can do that. But you take your milkshake that'll add a little bit of sweetness, Pop some in here with the American cheese, and that's gonna create a nice beef filling. So, we get the butter melted down. Does that seem like a reasonable pitch? Right, if I was on Shark Tank, would you give me 10% for a $9 million investment on In-N-Out beef slop? Because In-N-Out is very popular and it backs up traffic all over the streets, and there was this one time where I called up the Department of Transportation. <laughs> this is real, this is real. It was for a story that I was writing. Uh, and I called up the LA Department of Transportation and I was like, Hey, so like I literally saw a car accident because of a backed up in and out line that was just leaking into the street the other day. Has anyone else like complained about this? And the guy was like, oh yeah, they call all the time to tell me about this. And I was like, cool, have y'all ever, ever like tried to fix it? And he goes, oh no, 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 people sure do love their in and out burgers. And I was like, yeah, but like, you know, it's car accidents, it seems like there's something you could do. Force them to go into a lot, go into a little switchback snake situation. And he goes like, oh yeah, but what are we gonna do about it? I was like, you're the Department of Transportation. I felt like I was in a Kafka novel. Do y'all read Kafka? That part of our demo? <laughs> I also camped out in In-N-Out for six hours once after the Oscars, trying to see, cause celebrities go to In-N-Out after the Oscars. I think Brie Larson did it once, or she like brought In-N-Out into the Oscars to, uh, to hand out to people. And so I was like, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, you know, do my paparazzi thing. And I sat at the In-N-Out uh, for like a couple hours. Um, eating the same cold plate of fries is like, you know, a security guard just like stared at me and I was like, what bro? I brought the fries. I'm drinking my Arnie Palmy. Um, anyways, uh, zero celebrities over the course of six hours walked in. There was a guy that I thought might have been Quentin Tarantino, but it was just a guy that kind of looked like Quentin Tarantino to me. And then I showed his picture to someone else and they're like, that's, not only is that not Quentin Tarantino, that's not even a guy that particularly looks like Quentin Tarantino. So that's a very exciting thing that happened to me at an In-N-Out. So now we got our beef slop going. We're gonna gradually add what would be In-N-Out's milkshake to this. That's looking nice and thick. And again, we're gonna add French fries to this inside our calzone. Can men have pregnancy cravings? Cause that's what this is for me, right? Well, the sympathetic pregnancies are a thing, right? Where like men, like it's about to get real, real, real dumb in here. So like sometimes, you know, uh, like a person can get pregnant and then like a man near that person can also experience symptoms of pregnancy. Is this real? Am I making this, or was that an episode of House? <laughs> Anyways, point is, this is my pregnancy craving. It's just a bunch of Thousand Island favored beef slop uh, with potatoes shoved inside of a pizza dough and baked. It's kind of got like Costco chicken bake vibes to it, except <laughs> not at all. <laughs> this is looking good. I think we're here. Let's. Ah, you know what? Hot ketchup cream sauce. That's my drag name, and it's also a thing that I enjoy eating. We're gonna add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper in there. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. It's under seasoned. <laughs> and we got our beef slot. What's next? Oh, it looks like someone threw up hamburger helper. Also looks like my lunch yesterday. <laughs> this looks better than my lunch yesterday. I'm in a real piece of crap dish. 
Now that I see all the ingredients in front of me, I've started to have doubts about how this is all gonna come together. Cause I'm gonna let you in on a little trade secret. We don't like, <laughs> we don't like, we don't practice any of this. Like we, we never made this before. We have no idea how it's gonna work out. Um, but we're about to see. We got this dough that's nice and proved. We're gonna punch it out a little bit. You might ask, what did it prove to me? <laughs> it's a pun, you idiots. Godly. So we're gonna take that, sploop it down right there. We're gonna get a whole lot of flour on top of it. You might be asking Josh, what? You're telling me in and out which prides itself on uh, uh, ease of customer experience uh, is just gonna be uh, rolling out. Pizza dough fresh in every store? No. in and outs gonna buy Pizza Hut. Call him that. If you are a, a, a stonk trader, buy up the Pizza Hut shares. All right, so now we're gonna take this and I'm gonna just gonna kind of circumcise it a little bit. That just means to cut around, learn Latin, be a little less ignorant. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, just gonna freehand this into a circle. We could have used one of various circular large things to cut a nice circle, but no. No, we do not do that. And then what you can do is you can take kind of this part and you can braid it with some of the beef slop in between to make beef slop braids for the kids. That's gonna be on the kids menu. <laughs> Beef knots is what they're gonna call them. So we're gonna take some french fries. I'm gonna mash it. Oh, dude, we should put pickles in it, right? Make it animal style. Nicole, people are gonna have to be able to make this animal style or else it's not in and out. Can someone get, Nicole, pickles, please. Nicole, I'll give you a dollar. And I know I owe you a lot of dollars. I say that a lot. But this time I'm not lying. I am, I am lying to her. You take some American cheese. That's how they do it in and out. And now we take all that delicious beef slop. Eh, well, we're here. Also, anyone who says Five Guys is better than In-N-Out, <sighs> fighting words. Every person from any part of the country that doesn't have In-N-Out always says that their version of In-N-Out is better. Like anyone from Texas is like, Whataburger is better than In-N-Out. No, no. I once went to a Whataburger at 3 a.m. after a strip club. Thanks for the pickles, Nicole. It's animal style, we gotta have some pickles. We're adding the pickles in the spread and now we're gonna take, uh, here, we'll take the beef slot. We're gonna get some spread in there. Hot baked mayonnaise is a tradition in the mythical kitchen. Um, you know, some people have their own family traditions. Like we do Feast of the Seven Fishes because we're Italian and we're trying to, uh, hot mayonnaise here is, is what we do um, for Christmas as well. Remember that time I tried to put mayonnaise in the mashed potatoes and you all like really violently rebelled against me? I haven't forgotten. And now we fold it up. Okay. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> now we're gonna braid it. It's a very simple calzone braid technique. You wrap it around the finger, and then you add another finger, and then you wrap it around that, and then you pinch it, and you wrap it, and you pinch it, and uh, okay, and then you pinch it, and you wrap it. And you, well, you're gonna pinch it again, then what, guess what you're gonna do again? That's right, you're gonna wrap it, and then you're gonna. <laughs> That's a big D, all right, cool. Take this big D. Throw it in the oven about, I don't know how much degrees this takes. Let's reckon 400. <laughs> That's what we're reckoning right now. Ooh. Wow, this calzone's too hot to handle. That's why I grabbed it with my new mythical oven mitts now available at mythical.com for you and me and all the boys and girls. Was that a good ad read? Yeah. We nailed the copy, we got it right, we got the right vibe. Uh, cool, yeah, we, we made oven mitts. They work, they work good. You saw them work, uh, and I really like them. So I don't know, buy them if you want. Don't buy them, yeah, donate money to charity or something. You know, you can do whatever you want, do money. So we got the calzone out, uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna brush this down with egg wash, and then we're gonna top it with French, <laughs> we're gonna top it with French fries. That way it's got French fries on it. Here we go. I think this is the right move. Cause no, 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 Nicole, you have little faith. Check this out. Yeah, oh yeah, oh now it's all making sense. Josh isn't so crazy after all. <laughs> and then we're gonna, yeah, now I see the problem now. Cause now we're just gonna get an omelet there. Mm -hmm. Hold on, no, no, but I think what we can do mm -hmm. is just wipe away some of that egg and then, oh, hold on. Well, maybe I can just lift this up. No, that's real wet. All right, back in the oven for another 10. As you can see, the calzone is out of the oven and my cooking technique of pouring all the egg wash on it worked. Now you can just take this off and you got a nice little kind of what I can only call an egg fruit roll up. <laughs> it's good. 
When you go to In-N-Out and order this, which I can't stress enough, in the next 30 to 40 years is gonna be reality. They're gonna serve it to you on a large Lazy Susan with all the vegetable components, including the, the caramelized onions that they forgot to put inside the calzone. <laughs> and here is how they do it. They go, here you go. <laughs> and that's it. That's how I'm gonna continue eating the egg fruit roll up. Is that like that? Here we have the In-N-Out calzone. We got, here we got our In-N-Out burger inspired calzone with our In-N-Out burger inspired beef filling. That's right, that's the Ibik Ibib that we said from earlier, and now we get to eat, have to eat it. All right, let's cut into this, see what we got. Holy crapple pie, if that's not the wettest calzone you've ever seen. You kind of shake off some of the fries on there, but it's still intact. You know, this is, and we gotta say that this is not protein style. If you order it protein style, they'll just wrap the calzone filling in iceberg lettuce and then bake that off like uh, cabbage rolls or Polish golumpki. Does that interest you? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear off a piece of the calzone and I'm gonna wrap it in a lettuce cup. This is like a Korean bosom. And then we're gonna put a little bit of that on there. And then, cheers. I think there were points where we doubted this recipe. I know the peanut gallery over there, you all doubted me. <laughs> they laughed because it's true. <laughs> this is really tasty. Yeah, what my favorite part, one thing that I wish we would have done different, if I knew we were serving it on a bed of cold vegetables, I probably wouldn't have put the pickles to get up to 900 degrees inside the calzone, but we did and they're there. At this point, it's like if somebody just pre-chewed an In-N-Out burger for you and then spit it into a bowl of sauce, but in a good way. You get the fries, you get the cheese, you get the beef. I think it's a pleasant eating experience, but my palate's warped and my brain got touched by the sun one day and I ain't been right since. So, let's go spark someone. Amy, what are you doing? Oh my god, hi, I'm, uh, I'm working. No, stop, I'm you don't totally want to stop working. doing that entirely and eat this in and out calzone. Um, oh my gosh. What dramatic lighting, oh my god, is it golden hour already? I mean, yeah, it's it's warm out. Yeah, it's you, hot. You are, you are wearing a beanie though. Do you think so. I could be a beanie guy? I think you could pull it off. It's the nicest thing it, you've ever said to me. I, I, Thank you. I know, I try. All right, so uh, what we have here is an In-N-Out calzone. Okay. That is an In-N-Out spiced beef slop with cheese and potatoes and pickles inside of a calzone shell. Oh my God. Are you ready for this? Do you like In-N-Out? I, I love In-N-Out. Oh heck yeah, you're gonna dig this then. Oh my God, okay. We got a French fry crust. <laughs> do you want, wait, do you want some caramelized onions? We did those on the side. Mm, sure. Yeah, yeah. Here, no, Amy, don't be shy. <laughs> Do, wait, do you want some lettuce? <laughs> hey, also, it's on a spinning lazy no. Susan. Hey, it's on. <laughs> Not Pussy style. Oh my god. You can take a sec to chew. You, you, you don't okay. gotta do it right away. That is so good. The like, is it the french fries on top? Mm hmm. The crispiness and the cheesiness and the sauciness, the onions. Oh my god. It's like in and out, but wetter. Yes. And you want that. It's Yes, it's a nice wet in and out experience. I call it a wet zone. A wet zone, It's a Absolutely. hot wet zone. I think that's a perfect name for it. Would you pay $68 for this? I would pay $69. Nice! <laughs> Amy, thank you so much for being our guinea pig today. No problem. And thank you all so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes for you every week. We got new episodes of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. <gasps> hit us up on it. I was gonna hit us up on in and out oh, maybe. <laughs> Hit us up on Instagram and TikTok at Mythical Kitchen with pictures of your dishes under hashtag dreams become food, just like Lauren Chapman did. Lauren Chapman was leading a D&D game, wanted to make the hot dog upside down cake. Apparently her entire D&D &D troupe rebelled against her because they said that was disgusting, so she made a deconstructed version. They really loved it. Lauren, thanks for working with the recipe. You know? Because this is all about making people happy. Look how happy Amy is. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. See y'all next time. Can I eat the rest of this? Yes. Okay, great. Please, for the love of God, get it out of my sight. The Mythical Kitchen's favorite way to obliterate garlic immortalized in t-shirt form. Get the Palm Heel Strike Tea now at mythical.com.